What's up friends, John Bush here. And I wanna share with you some visioning that I've been doing. Uh, super inspired, I went to a Natalie Rise concert last night. She's an incredible reggae artist, total activist. Her message is super potent and on point. And it just got me so pumped up and like emotional and inspired. She performed at the Greater Reset after party for, for us here in Central Texas. It was an awesome, incredible show. Uh, and she did like a solo acoustic thing. Last night she had a full band. Oh, they were so on point. She shouted out the Greater Reset and all the warriors that are doing good work in the world, building the alternative, not relying on governments and politicians to change things. And I was just super inspired. And I rarely ever go out and party. I hardly even go do social stuff. I'm just so entrenched in my work. So this weekend, I'm flying solo. My lovely fiance is out of town. The kids are with their mom. So I got to go out last night. I mean, I could go out even when they're around, but I just don't. But I was invited by Natalie's crew to go to the show, so I definitely took them up on it. It was incredible. But this weekend, you know, I'm doing some visioning and some business development and some self-development. And I wanna share my vision with you guys. I'm gonna put this in paper, put this on paper, kind of like a manifesto of sorts, but it's always spoken word is my favorite way to communicate with folks. So let me lay it out here first. Oh, my good friend Philip, who does a lot of graphics work and design video stuff, he just set up this transcription software. So maybe this will actually become the thing. But anyway, I digress. Okay, so in addition to being all pumped up and inspired by Natalie Rise, with her dropping all sorts of insight about community, you know, she said uh, it's little things that we do for people, just little instances, little circumstances, little interactions that breed unity in the community, right? And I just thought that that was super potent. And she also talked about, you know, how the future generations, we got to be prepared for the future generations and live for the future generations and the children. And she has a song, which she played last night, and it's like, generations will rise, governments they will fall. And she also shared, she was just speaking in between songs about how there's been gover governments, empires, kingdoms that come and go, but what stays and what remains constant is the love that we have in our hearts, that one love philosophy, right? And the freedom and people's desire to be freedom, to be free. And so I've been vibing on that. And then also in my, in my business development stuff, I'm reading this book called Traction. It's this enterprise it's an entrepreneurial system to utilize in your businesses we talked about having a one-year two-year five-year ten-year plan right and you lay out the ten-year plan and then you're like what do we need to do now in order to get there to that ten-year plan so that's that's my introduction and here's the plan uh, and I've been riffing on this you know call it the Confederation of Freedom Cell Communities call it what you will this is what we are going to be working towards here in Central Texas and I want to share the journey with you as we build a free society. The free society that we build here in Central Texas can be linked up with the other communities and free societies throughout the globe. And essentially we can form our de facto confederation, a nation of sorts. Not a nation state, but a nation of people connected with our common reverence for freedom, bodily autonomy, privacy, doing business with one another, supporting one another, our kids growing up together, uh, trading food, sharing food, breaking bread together, right? All right, so you know, it goes like this. Start with that vision, that 10-year plan. Walk around downtown Bastrop, by the way. Start with that vision, that 10-year plan. And what I foresee, like my life's work, is creating an environment where free people can experience political autonomy, meaning they are no longer subservient to some state, to some bureaucracy, to some ruler, governor, bureaucrat, city, council, county commissioner, whatever. We're free, sovereign human beings. We have our own systems of relating to one another, economic, financial, education, health, right? And so it's like, okay, well, that's the goal, that's the vision. Well, how do we get there? 
okay? So I want you to project into the future. Let's, let's say 2030. 2030 is an ambitious goal. The enemies of freedom, the technocrats, the globalists, the Rockefellers, the Gates, the Schwabs, the Great Reset, they've been at this for a long time. They have immense money, billions and billions and billions of dollars. That guy had a Pee Wee Herman shirt. His little crew here. Um, and so we got our work cut out for us, right? And they have this big ambitious plan of 2020 to 2030 being a decade of transformation. So, I don't know, we could lay it out for 2030. It's like they're doing their work, we're doing our work. That's what we called it the greater reset, right? We want to reset too. So I was like, all right, let's see where we're at in 2030. So like project, let's just use 2030 for an example. Project down to 2030. It's eight years down the road. We want to have political autonomy. The, um, the circumstances that I believe we need in order for that to be possible are as follows. We need to be congregated in close proximity in, in a geographic area. And again, Central Texas, I invite you to join us in Central Texas. Derek Bros is doing his thing in Mexico. Uh, tons of freedom cell communities in Mexico. Really quite impressive, in fact. They may, Mexico as a nation state may be just dominating. I mean, there's probably more in the U.S., but Mexico's smaller and more connected, it seems. I got big ups for Central Texas here. I think we're setting the bar pretty high as well. Um, we got like 700 people on our Telegram group. So, congregate in close proximity. And then, in order to make the transition, I foresee the transition looking something like We've amassed 25,000, 25, 50,000, 100,000 people in a given geographic area. It's not all like on the same property or anything, spaced out across Central Texas, for example. 25, 50,000 people, right? I mean, so that, that, that creates the strength in numbers. To have some sort of political leverage, not political as in a voting block, but political as in we are here as a group, we're acting in unison, we have spokesperson, spokespeople, and we are no longer going to participate in your institutions. All right, so I foresee having enough people together to have leverage and to collectively declare independence. And to do so in a peaceful way, not a hideout, not like a sovereign citizen, not like we're going through the law, the courts, whatever, although maybe there will be a legal component. I don't know, I'd prefer to avoid that. I'd prefer just sheer opt out Satya Graha, peaceful non-compliance. And it's like, we have all these people, we're not going to comply. We wanna have a conversation with the authorities. They'll no longer be our authorities. So maybe we should use a different word. With the bureaucrats, with the government. We wanna have a conversation about what this peaceful transition to political autonomy looks like because we no longer rely on your systems. We, over the past eight years, have developed our own systems of social organization, finance, economics, education, health, security, defense, justice, okay? That's what I foresee, this point, this cataclysmic event when we have uh, the critical mass necessary to make this happen. Okay, so project that out. That's where we are eight years from now. What do we need to do now in the present moment in order to make that more accomplishable? That's the question that we need to be asking ourselves. And that's where, that's where exit and build strategy comes into play. All right, so I just did this X and Build Life Design workshop recently. It's actually a bonus if you sign up for the X and Build Land Summit uh, to visit in person, attend in person, or a virtual immersion pass. This whole X and Build Land Summit, this whole X and Build thing, we're just pushing it out, we're cranking it out. The Greater Reset, the Land Summit, the workshops I do, all the work that we're doing in the Freedom Cell Network, it's all towards this end, right? It's not just, we're not just hairy ferrying around, like it's all has a purpose, okay? So in order to make it more accomplishable that we can actually peacefully opt out, we need to spend our time in the present moment opting out already, opting out of their systems, developing and creating these parallel structures that enable us to enjoy a high quality of life, maybe even a better quality of life. I would argue a better quality of life because we're no longer dependent on their unethical systems. We're not financing our own oppression. We're not using bank fake funny money bogus credit creation nonsense, right? As I'm saying that, I'm thinking like, you just signed a mortgage about eight years ago. So let's make a bunch of money, pay that off and figure out new ways to do it. Um, it's an inside outside game. 
So let's build those systems. Let's create those systems. What type of systems am I talking about? Well, speaking of banking, all right, let's limit our use of Federal Reserve notes. Let's create barter networks. Let's use cryptocurrency. Let's exchange with one another outside of their system. All right, this also helps it to make it easier to avoid the income tax. The property tax is going to be a big challenge. That's one we'll have to really sort out further down the road. Okay, so financial, banking, like let's use decentralized finance. Let's pony up some cryptocurrency, find some wealthy crypto holders. They put it up, supply it, they get interest on it from the DeFi platform, the decentralized application. And then that is then used to purchase land, owner finance, whatever. Exit their system. Uh, education's a huge one. We got to have a mind towards raising free, critical thinking, sovereign, healthy children right now that reject their authority altogether. Uh, in my opinion, that means no spanking because when you spank, you're showing children that violence is a way to change people's behavior. And then when you're like, because I said so, you're like you need to do this because I said so, that's just showing some sort of arbitrary authority, right? I'm not saying, you know, I've shifted my thinking from the radical unschooling and more permissive kind of parenting to more of a leader, um, but nonetheless. So we need to raise sovereign children and how we raise them peacefully, but also the education system, right? So one of the big things that I want to focus on, because my kids do this homeschool co-op right now, uh, and we're probably going to start a, another little Tuesday or Thursday, Friday thing here coming up pretty soon. But I, I envision creating a Central Texas Freedom Cell Network school system. Because like I pay property tax on our 10-acre homestead to Bastrop County. It's the Bastrop County Courthouse here. And the biggest chunk of the damn property tax goes to Bastrop Independent School District, which my kids don't go to. And the homeschool co-op that they go to now, it could use some resources. I mean, I support them and I'm doing better financially, so I help when I can with extra stuff besides the tuition. But like, pfft, man, a couple thousand bucks here and there would really make a big difference. So I think that we should create our own school system that provides resources, support, financial, just energy, wisdom to the local homeschool co-ops. Uh, Morena, who's a big activist and volunteer with the local Freedom Cell stuff. She's helping a lot with the Land Summit. Her kid goes to a homeschool co-op that has a lot of freedom-minded people and a freedom-minded teacher. There's all sorts of homeschooling, just one-on-one -on -one homeschooling. I'm thinking Aurora Rogers and her amazing children. Um, so it's like, all right, we pull resources. It could be a voluntary contribution, not a tax, of course. We pull resources in, we have wealthy benefactors, we get crypto rich, and then we take that money and we dole it out to the homeschool co-ops and like-minded private school programs. And now we're creating our own school system, right? We're no longer dependent on yours, we're not using yours, none of our children, right? Imagine back to the 2030, we got 25,000 people. None of our children use your school system. We no longer want to contribute to your school system. We don't use it, and frankly, and then everyone's like, well, your kids don't go to school, but you still have to pay. Well, you're, it's a part of a community fee or the social contract. These kids are going to, we want to educate them so they can be valuable community members. That's all bullshit because we know that it's indoctrination nonsense. I don't want to subsidize that type of education for the community kids either. <sighs> all right, so that's the education. And you got the health component. We slowly but surely decouple from the Western medic medical MD allopathic paradigm. Save it for an emergency, car accident. Help our brothers and sisters quit their reliance and dependency on pharmaceuticals. One of my companies, Bray Botanicals, we do Kratom, CBD, Delta 8, cannabis products. A lot of people are using those instead of pain medicine and anxiety medicine. We set up our own medical system. There's already talks of this, and this is already happening in Central Texas, where we actually have MDs for folks that want to go that route, and it's not, you don't have to have a vaccine, it's not part of this whole subsidized healthcare system. I need to drop the affiliate link, because we're an affiliate for Zion, that's the health share that I use now. So we could all just use Zion, maybe we get a big group rate or something, but it's a health share program. We pay like just a little over $200 a month. If there's an emergency, it's covered 100%, I just pay up to $1,000 out of pocket per incident. Uh, I mean, I can endorse them because I use them. I haven't actually had to use the, pro the program because, God bless, I haven't gotten fallen really ill or anything, and I don't have a primary care physician or no pharmaceuticals or anything. So, But the point is we're no longer using their Obamacare, Affordable Air Care Act, Health Affordable Care 
marketplace bullshit. Fraud, fake, insurance, scam, nonsense. Fake, okay? So the health, the education, the money. Uh, we employ one another, we do business with one another. If we have a plumbing issue, we go to our directory first to find a plumber. Uh, when it comes to emergency response and security, we got the guys that are trained in firearms. We all train in self-defense. We have our own SUV and trucks that deploy. We call our own number instead of 911. We're calling our own freedom line and deploying. If there's an emergency, our SUVs show up and support, right? So we're no longer calling 911. We're no longer relying on their this, that, and the other. And then if it's like, that's what the, where the conversation comes in in 2030. It's like, okay, we're still, we still use the roads from time to time to get from here to there. And uh, we, we really appreciate the fire department, whatever. You know, and they're so, it's all like, what does that actually look like, this transition? I did a Tom Woods interview and got to talk about this recently quite a bit as well. We gotta be thinking about, okay, what are the pain points gonna be? But my idea is, let me just sum up here because I'm about to fill up my memory card. Um, how can we create an environment environment where it makes it more feasible to opt out and in order to do that we need to exit and build we need to build so we may exit in the present moment now nothing could be more important this is the path this is my life's work this is why we're doing this exit and build land summit you can register for free watch day one and two at exit and build land I want to I want you to join me and join us on this adventure it's really gonna make a big difference in the world uh, we want to show people that there's another way to live. A lot of people say exit and build is escapism, retreatism, defeatism. Nothing could be further from the truth. We're doing the hard work that people aren't doing. Voting is fucking easy. No risk. Worthless, in my opinion. If it was effective or if it made any difference, it would be illegal. That's an old quote. We're trying to show people that there's another way to organize ourselves socially that isn't dependent on crooks, politicians, voting, giving up your authority, abrogating the responsibility for the securing of your community. It's us getting out there and experimenting and doing it ourselves. And I really think this is the path forward. All right, so like I said, I've got a little bit of time to myself to actually do some thinking and some visioning. Got to enjoy some incredible music from an incredible musician, Natalie Rise. N-A-T-T-A-L-I Rise with a Z. Oh, if you haven't heard of her, just go start listening to her music. She's the bomb and she's with us in so many different ways. All right, big ups, John Bush, one love. We got this. Join us, X and Build, X and Build Landsummit.com. Break it all down. Get out of the city. Join us here in Central Texas. Join Derek in Mexico. Join the Freedom Cell Network, freedomcells.org. We can do this. But let's not just get one last thing. Try to develop a consciousness of when you're being reactive and stop. Be proactive. Come up with a plan. Just like this. I got this 10-year plan, this 8-year plan. It's like I got blinders on like a horse. You got Ukraine, COVID, Biden, scandal, Will Smith, Chris Rock, whatever. Everyone gets pulled this direction and that direction. They're in a reactionary paradigm. No, we need to be proactive. We need to have our own course, our own goals in our personal life, but also as a community and stay on that path and ignore all the bullshit and nonsense that's going on outside of our world and focus on that. And ladies and gentlemen, with enough dedication, with enough team and uh, working together cooperation and enough massive action, we can make it happen. All right, peace and freedom, much love.